I can only relate what my own experience has entailed over the past few years. Um, the closest thing that has come to what you might describe as liberation um, for me. I'm not liberated in this grand sense, not at all. I still suffer daily, regularly, in all kinds of ways, most of them self-inflicted. Um, but I suffer less than I used to suffer 10 years ago. And part of it was, and I think we talked about it last time, Lucas, part of it, of it is the realization in the second half of life that um, my life is not about me, has never been about me, will never be about me, and that the attempt to carry responsibility for all the unfoldings of my life puts me in the position of Atlas, of having to carry the weight of the world in my shoulders, while I don't have anywhere near the power of Atlas, and, and that is incredibly not only frustrating, that is oppressive and claustrophobic. And understanding that your life or my life has never been about me um, is both a liberation, uh, but seemingly paradoxically, it's also the realization that you are a tool of nature, um, that um, life is a kind of service. And I don't mean by this um, something romantic. I, I, I mean by this something very pungent and, and, and difficult which is to be in service of nature, to be in service of the flow of the transpersonal as it goes through you. Um, that can be very tough because the transpersonal doesn't give a damn about your personal safety or, or happiness or comfort uh, uh, or your egoic list of desires. It doesn't give a damn about any of that. So you could both describe it from one perspective as a kind of slavery. Um, and from another perspective, you could describe the same thing equally validly as a kind of liberation. It's the liberation of the slave. It's that uh, it, it's the profound freedom of being in confinement, <laughs> knowing that uh, this is what it's all about. And if you can be free in solitary confinement, then, then you truly are free. And I intuit that uh, that's, that's the art of the second half of life. Wow. Yeah. It's not a practice. It's life. Well, it's an insight. If we suffer enough, we all get some insights, right? Yeah, that's a, no that's a little bit of a non-trivial insight. I'm going to say, from my perspective. So my curiosity is, <laughs> to what extent was this fueled by psychedelics? To what extent was it fueled by rash your uh, uh, thinking about things, life events? I'm really interested because, once again, you really nailed something here. I mean, I, if you ask me to say it, it's exactly what you just said. You are everything. <laughs> it, you're the master and the slave. Uh, and you're only the master because you know how to be the slave. Uh, it's exactly what you're saying. You said it perfectly. So I'm interested how you got the insight. Not psychedelics. Um, I, I did psychedelics during a more or less limited period of my life, a couple of years, um, and it's been over 10 years ago. Um, so no, this didn't come from psychedelics. Psychedelic experience is very profound, but it's also um, a manifestation of what I like to call the prime directive of mind, which is to deceive itself. And, uh, and it's, um, it's, it requires a certain degree of paying attention for one to notice how much of the psychedelic experience is self-deception, um, a kind of a carrier of a deeper meaning. But to see that deeper meaning, you have to pay a lot of attention. But even those deeper meanings were not the origin of what I just told you. Um, and it wasn't bookish philosophizing either. You certainly don't get anywhere near this with academic philosophy. You get, if, if anything, you get very far away 
from what I just described, because academic philosophy is conceptual. It puts a conceptual barrier between one and one's lived experience, um, especially analytic philosophy. Continental philosophy is closer to lived experience, as Nietzsche showed us all. Um, but what I just told you, it's, it's the product of paying attention to life as you suffer. I mean, this is the product of suffering, right? Uh, um, but uh, we, we live in a culture in which we try to insulate ourselves as much as possible from suffering. We turn suffering into something to be overcome through recipes, through, through procedures, and often it doesn't help. And for me, it definitely didn't help. So I think if there is any difference between me and, and Joe Average, uh, and Jane Average, maybe I have a disposition to pay attention even to the unfolding of suffering. And if you pay attention to it, certain things in life are, I think, are, in, are inescapable unless you have the means to keep on distracting yourself all the way to your deathbed, which unfortunately a lot of us are very good at, very good at distracting ourselves all the way to our deathbed and then realizing what's going on 30 seconds before you're out of the game. Um, but if you have my disposition, which is not a merit, it's just the way I was put together. It's how I was born. I can't help but pay attention. And then you realize that uh, the whole notion that your life is about yourself, which is the foundation of Western well-being, um, which is, you know, you take the reins of your life and, you know, you are responsible for your happiness. That all of this is an assumption that has no foundation whatsoever. Um, and that it has a very detrimental effect of giving you responsibility for a natural unfolding over which you have absolutely no control. Um, and if you pay attention, you notice it. And I noticed it. And maybe I'll change my mind 20 years from now if I live that long. I don't know. But uh, right now, this is my lived experience. It's, it's the coming to terms with this lived experience that it, it's not about me, has never been, will never be. And the best I can do is is to be of service to nature. Um, Christian mythology gives us hints about that, you know, the life of sacrifice. Um, there is something to that, I think. So if, if you're looking for how did I get here, can I share and help other people get here? No, I can't. I suffered my way into this and, and I didn't choose to be where I am. So I, I, I can't help anybody other than to say there is something somewhere and you may bump into it if you suffer enough <laughs> that, that that's the best i can say i can't be of further help 